Hello, dolphins. This is Maiden Trouble again, and um, by request, I'm doing a brand new video all about paintbrushes, focusing on what kind of paintbrushes I use and what the numbers are. Somebody wanted to know, so that's why I'm doing it. Okay, here I have with me Liska and Abbott, my two new dolls, sporting my my two latest and greatest face-ups. And sorry about my ugly, cluttered kitchen in the background. <laughs> My sunroom is a little bit um, occupied right now, full of oil painting stuff. So, let's get to it. I'm gonna t I'm gonna tell you the basics, but first I'm gonna start with a, a bit of a, a lecture speech. Um, uh, I just want to tell you that um, with art, it's it's not like it's not science. It's completely the opposite. I can't just tell you. Um, buy this number and this brand brush and then do exactly as I say, just like this. You know, it's not like that at all, you know? Um, everybody's different. Everybody has different style. Everybody has different hands. Some people are left-handed, some people are right-handed. Everybody has different brains. And we think completely differently. So I really can't tell you to paint like me! No. Don't do that. Don't paint like me. Paint like you. And um, and don't be uh, discouraged about how you think you're bad or something. Don't don't think like that. Think positively. And uh, don't be scared to try face up, because it's so easy to to fix mistakes um, that you really shouldn't be scared. Just, um, I understand if you've never done anything artistic before, it might be uh, awkward, you know? It might be, uh, it might feel awkward. It feels awkward for, um, even professional artists when they're starting new techniques. So, uh, just don't feel bad about that. Feel good about it. Just, you know, just think, I'm trying something new and it's fun and, and who knows, I might be great at it, you know? Think like that. Um, okay, back on the, the technical aspect. Um, w when it comes to art, you gotta, you really gotta pick your own tools. Because, um, like I said, everybody's different. And I might have a way of maneuvering a brush. And I just have, a, you know, a way about my my movements that that you might be different with, you know? So, um, just because I'm doing it with this certain brush doesn't mean that you can or will or will want to. Uh, you need to, um, explore a little bit, and you can get, uh, you can get, uh, brushes in, in packages like this. A whole pack that comes with, like, different types of brushes, and, I don't know, this one had a whole bunch of brushes in it. So, <laughs> you can just, uh, buy one of those, and then... There, that's probably the cheaper way to go, and you can, you can see this one was six ninety nine. Uh, so um, it's it's not too expensive to explore paintbrushes, really, especially the the uh, synthetic watercolor type brushes. You need to just figure out what you like best. Every every artist needs to do that because it's like it's not paint by number. You can't just follow someone's directions. You need to explore and discover who you are as an artist. So, um, I will tell you what I have, but it doesn't mean you have to have exactly the same thing. Um, like, you know, the, the most, the most basic, 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 basic information that I can give you is just to find the tiniest brush that you can find for, like, hairlines. Like that one, you know. Uh, you know, that's it. Just look for some, the tiniest brush you can find, and just make sure that the bristles are straight, you know, and they're, that it's good looking, that it wasn't damaged during shipment or something. Just, uh, just pick it out and be picky about it, and, uh, just get something that looks okay to you. <laughs> so, uh, that's about it. Okay, now I'm going to, um, I'm going to give you a more in-depth thing about, about brushes. Um, okay, the most, the most, most basic, I think, is, uh, you got your oil painting brushes, which is this one. See how long it is? That's an oil painting brush, and they're all gonna be really long-handled, so you can step back from your canvas and watch your, 
and see your painting developing as you're working. You're not supposed to work close to the canvas. Um, if you're a multi-hobbied uh, artist like I am, you're going to want to keep these separate from your other brushes. Don't, don't cross them over. You need your, to keep them completely separate. You got like oil paint and watercolor. Don't mix your oil brushes with your water brushes. You'll also notice that it looks very coarse and rough, and that's another reason why I don't want to use it for face-ups. It's made of natural hog hair. It's actually made from like a hog's mane or tail or whatever. And it's very coarse and rough, and that is the best for using, for painting with oil, but not for dolls. I, I wouldn't really try it because I don't, I really, in my professional opinion, I don't think that it uh, is going to work. So, um, yeah, I'm going to stick that over there. <laughs> and, um, yeah, we're not doing that. So, um, what I uh, recommend for you, for everybody who's doing face-ups, is synthetic. It's made of plastic bristles, just like the hairs that we put on our dolls, the wigs. You know, basically the same thing. It's just plastic hairs. Um, I once got a question about, uh, you'll notice these brushes. They're, they're very bright and colorful. <laughs> they were originally white, but um, I used them for art class doing watercolor-y, watercolor type um, paints. And it stained them. Somebody asked me once uh, uh, if I had blue paint on this. And I said, no, it's just stained. So, so that's, that's that. This one is like got orange on it and it's just stained. It, um, I'm sorry if that is misleading in the videos, but yeah, there's no orange on it. Usually I put peachy colors of pastel on it. Okay. So, um, so that's that. We're using synthetic. And, um, they come in lots of colors. This one right here actually looks natural. That one might be some sort of real hair, some sort of mohair-y type thing. And you'll notice it's very fluffy. So this one might be good for a general blushing, you know. A general sort of blushing of the cheek, you know, a fluffy brush like that one. So yeah, you can use that. I don't think this one is hog hair at all, it's so it's soft. So that, that one can be used if that one is natural. Here's another one. Here's a here's an unused hog hair um, natural brush and it's actually short. And I would not use that. I think it would it's just very scratchy. You know, I don't think it would um, lay down pastel very well. So we're getting it out of here. Now I'm gonna go over the uh, the shape types of brushes that you can find. Um, the first one is flat. That's what it's called, I believe. You'll notice it has a square edge and uh, it's basically like it sounds. It's flat. <laughs> this one is also flat, the fluffy one. Um, as uh, When it comes to doing pastel face-ups, I, um, I would use something like this for a, a big general area, like a cheek, you know, like if you just want rosy cheeks and you just want to spread the color on a on a white area you can use this. You could also use something like this but uh, these uh, brushes are a little firmer you'll notice so you could use it for also use it as a focused area like a focused sort of shape. Um, you know it might take a little bit uh, more work to get uh, to get a fluffy sort of glowing type uh, color with this one because it's so it's so focused into this tight shape and they come in different lengths you'll notice the, I can't recommend a length um, you just have to decide what you like best this is a, a big one this one is so big that it's really it might be good for a general area blushing and it's pretty soft too um, but I actually just use this as a sweeper you know it's my little broom, and I, I just use it to sweep, you'll notice in my videos, uh, the uh, excess dust that I don't really need. You need to sweep off the excess. 
Okay, uh, there's a similar type that is called filbert. And uh, I'm going to bring you back the oil painting brush. This is a filbert. you notice it's flat, but it has a round edge, like this one. It's U-shaped. Um, yeah, that's called a filbert. And uh, I don't have any any synthetic filberts right now that I use for face-up, but I actually would really recommend that because I think this would be good if it's if it's like this one and really firm and um, holds its shape well. It might be good for like eye shadows and making making very distinctive sh colored shapes on your doll's face. I really like uh, filbert is like is the best. It, I use it for oil painting, so I would love one for my dolls. But I don't have one, so I I just use these uh, small flats for my little um right now for my concentrated shapes. Oh. This one actually might count as a filbert. It's really tiny though, but it has a round edge, and I, I use this a lot for my, for very small areas, it's for my uh, eyeshadows and stuff. You'll you'll notice, you know. You've seen them. Here's another flat one. This one is angled, and this one is actually too long. I don't like using this one. I don't think for um, people like to use these angled ones for eyebrows. I've noticed. So you can do that. I would probably rather use something like this. It's short. For some reason you get more control when the bristle is short. So you might want to keep that in mind when you're shopping. <laughs> you know, there's long and there's short. And you need to decide which one is best for you. Here's a crazy one. I've never used this before. But look, it has a zigzagged edge and it was made this way. And it's uh, it's like a flat brush with with the squared edge, but it's zigzaggy. <laughs> I have no idea what what that might be good for, but you know, if you happen to if you happen upon one of these, you know, you can experiment, and that's the fun part about it. You might discover something that I don't know, and then you can make a video and tell us all about it. <laughs> and I might take your tips. Okay, um. I'm going to show you this one now. This is called round, obviously. It's just one of those basic kind of round brushes. I've never used this one. This is good for painting, but I don't know about face-ups. Maybe if you're doing big, thick tattoos, um, something like this might, might be good. You know, if you want a calligraphy-type tattoo on your doll, that might work. Uh, yeah, this is a big one. Um, you might say that this is... I'll show you. This one is in really bad shape. See, it's bent. But this one is also round. It's just different size. I used to use this one for my detail work, but I found some brushes that are actually smaller, so I don't use this one anymore. And I would throw it away and replace it, because, I mean, look at it. It's stuck that way. <laughs> so there it is. That's called round. And that is. those are actually the three basic uh, shapes that that you would use in in face-ups and in painting in general. Just It's flat, filbert, and round. Basically, um, when it comes to long and short, the long ones hold more paint. But the short ones give you more control. So this one will make a line that goes further. This one is just easier to control <laughs> as far as making it... But like I said, you don't want to be too controlling, because sometimes that can be bad. You gotta have that beautiful line work going on. Okay, now, to answer a specific question, this one is the tiniest brush I think I've ever found. It's called 20 over 0. 20 slash 0. It, I don't even know how the... I, I'm, you know, sorry about my ignorance, but I don't know how the size really um, associates with the number. I, I really believe that you should probably just eyeball it when you're in the store. If you see a brush and it's tiny, you might want to go for it. Um, yeah, so 20 over 0, you can look for that, but, you know, I believe that you need to decide what's best for you, because, you know, you're, you probably, you might want your eyelashes to look different from my eyelashes. So, yeah, that's about it. This one is really, really long, and it's called 10 over 0. 
I don't know why. I don't know why it's, it's... Look, this one's bad, too. I don't know why they call it that, but... Yeah, that's what that one is. It's bigger. You can see it's thicker. I will show you how the brushes work. Now, if you would like to see that... Remember when I was talking about standing brushes? This one just became rosy red permanently. <laughs> so I'm going to show you what it looks like to use a, uh, a flat brush. There you go. It's just a basic square line. Or you can turn it sideways and do some pretty thin brush work right there. Now I've rinsed it off and obviously it's going to stay uh, reddish, pinkish forever. You might be a lot more familiar with uh, this round brush. This is your basic brush. See? Now when I talk about uh, brush work, I, um, uh, you got your good line quality and bad line quality. Bad line quality is when you're thinking about it too hard. And if you don't know where you where you want to go, you might just sort of make this really ugly curly cue. Unless you want it to look like that, you know. If you decide it to look like that, then I guess it's okay. Art is funny like that. But you want it to, you really want to be like swift. And know how much pressure to use. Know how much pressure not to use. And your lines will be prettier. They'll be tapered. You know, more pressure makes a thicker line, see? And then, you know, obviously, less pr pressure just uses, puts the tip into use and it comes out a lot thinner. So you have a, a wide range of creativity with these things. Also, I want to point out that um, uh, it's not, it is not a writing pen. Don't, I wouldn't, well, you can, well, I wouldn't really hold it like this. <laughs> because we're not, like, writing. This is how you get, like, ugly line work. You want to sort of hold it lightly, sort of like this. And just be, just be swift. Like that, you know. Don't uh, don't be overbearing. Just sort of, just sort of do lots of stuff like that, you know. Be light with it, light. <laughs> so there you go. I don't really have a fable, not fable, <laughs> no, um, filbert. Sorry. <laughs> I don't really have a filbert brush that I can that I can show you in action, but filbert. Filbert is very versatile, and um, you can get all sorts of shapes out of using it. Uh, the only one that I have is this little one that I showed you earlier, and um, it's not going to look very much different from this stuff on the on the camera. Let's uh, experiment with this one, shall we? I have no idea what this is going to do. It just has a little, um, funny edges, like, looks like you can make three lines if you're very light about it. I don't think, this is kind of like a novelty thing, it's like, oh look, we just had this idea for a new brush, but I, I don't think you're going to really do anything too creative with this. Besides silly marks like this, with the three little prongs <laughs> on the end. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I'll be using this. Um, and then you got, like, you got angled brushes. And people use that for eyebrows. Let me get my other one. 
It basically just sort of looks like a flat brush and then you can turn it on its tip for a really thin line. So yeah, there you go. There's my doodle. <laughs> it's brilliant! I love it! No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the alternative method for doing hair lines is uh, color pencils. This is Prisma's color. And then I have this, which is called Faber-Castell. Faber um, and this one was sold individually in case you just want one certain color. You can just buy it individually. So that's what I do. I would love to buy a huge like box of them, but they're expensive. Um, I will show you a photographic difference that that I have come up with for my own face-ups. One, um... Lyska's eyelashes and eyebrows are done with colored pencil, and Abbott's eyelashes are done with paint. So, I'll show you, you can't see it very well here, but I'll show you the photographic difference at the end of this video. Um, I have, I used to say, I've said in my past videos that, um, I'm not very comfortable with color pencils, but I'm sort of getting there. <laughs> um, the uh, I found, for me at least, doing um, eyelashes with um, with a brush, it comes out thicker. Not that that's a bad thing. And I've found that I can make my pencil lines thinner, you know, for for thinner, longer eyelashes. Um, because obviously the paint only goes so far before the brush starts drying out, so my brush lines were were thicker and shorter for Abbott's eyelashes. My uh, lines were thinner and longer for Liska's eyelashes. Um, and what I didn't like before was my line quality. Like that, that's what I'm talking about. My line quality, I'll show you. Pencil is, it's really difficult to get a good line. See, look at that, that's ugly. <laughs> you gotta be swift, really swift, like that. There, now that looks like, that looks more like hair lines, don't you think? Than this. It's really hard to, I think, I think at least, it's harder to maneuver the the pencil to make really nice looking eyelash lines because I've done it before for some other dolls and um, didn't like it because it just looked like pencil lines. <laughs> so it took a while for me to practice and I practiced with my swiftness and uh, I, f I finally came out with Liska's eyelashes and they looked a lot better. They were, I just, I was just really swift. Oh, not that dark though. I was really light about it and really like swift and I could make nice long eyelashes. And uh, it's more it's more in the arm than in the wrist. You know, you can't just you can't just do this. Ooh, I'm making very tight, crappy pencil line eyelashes. Look at that. <laughs> no, you gotta you gotta really go like that. Uh, swiftness, that's the key word here. <laughs> that's all That's all I can tell you. Um, so yeah, it's, ju it's just all about practice. I recommend just getting a page like this and doodling with your brush and with your pencils. Uh, and then you can tackle the, the doll face up. <laughs> just to take a moment to stress to you that thing that I said about artists choosing their tools and um, basically there is no wrong answer. You just need to um, find find what you need and, and what you want to use. I have a feather, courtesy of my bird. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use it. Why? Because I'm an artist and I can do that. <laughs> because it's not science. There is no right and wrong answer. There it is. Now there's paint on my feather. Ooh, nice. Look, it's very feathery. I think I just made a fish. <laughs> See what I mean? That that is art, people. You, I mean, there you can't have anybody tell you no. And you know what? I could do this on my dolls if I wanted to because I'm an artist and they're my dolls. 
And it's like, I'll do that if I want. Look at that thin line. Look, feather people, feather. If you can find a way to manipulate the feathers to your liking, you can actually use one. So yeah, uh, at this point, I'm not sure what I'm leaving out. What have I not told you? So I think I'm just going to go ahead and wrap it up, and you can ask questions if you want to. I'll do my best to answer. Yeah, have a great day, and uh, enjoy your face-upping. You know, just hang in there. Um, it, it took me a year to get where I am now. I think I'm a lot better. It just practice makes perfect. What they've told you since you were a kid is true. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> it really does. So just practice, and, you know, you're... It may not be an award-winning face-up on your first try, but you can always try again and again and again until you're really, really confident and really know what to do and come out with a really nice-looking doll, you know. And, uh, yeah, just don't listen to people if they don't like your face-up work, you know. What, what do they know? <laughs> I don't know. You know, sometimes there's negativity online and you just can't pay attention to it. You know, because it's like, who cares? It's your doll, you know. You can do what you want. Maybe you made it look like that on purpose. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. Just think of it that way. Try to ignore people if they're being mean. Because they're, like I said, what do they know? <laughs> so, that's all. Um, Yeah, so, ask questions as needed. I'll be here. Alright, so, good night. Who stole my sandwich? <laughs>